Is Diablo 4 a soulless cash grab of a game designed just to prop up Blizzard before the Microsoft acquisition? Maybe, maybe not. How about it, y'all? You got hog. I'm back. Internet's back up. But uh, so I've had plenty of time. I've had 10 days of no internet, which really sucked, by the way. But I've had some uh, pretty sufficient time to reflect on my time with Diablo 4. And the reason is because uh, it doesn't have an offline mode. So I've been playing other games and having fun and kind of, kind of realize some things when you get out of the spill of Lilith 1 is really what I call that game. Uh, y'all, this game is soulless. Does, does anybody else feel that way? You feel like it's lacking something. You feel like when women say, I just had this hole in my soul and you filled that void. That's what I feel. I feel like there's something missing when I play this game. Uh, not only is it the first game I've played that has a chore list for you to do, and you can get some good stuff at the end of the chore list, um, but it's also the first game where I've seen the entire player base be conditioned to lower their standards. It's pretty wild. But to set the stage, we got to remember that for some reason, Blizzard, Diablo, really, Diablo players are the worst about this, but we romanticize this thought of the second a Diablo game is finished, that the devs just run back in their office and start work on Diablo. So like when Diablo 3 came out, they released it and they were like, oh, yeah, it's done. Let's go work on Diablo 4. And they ran to their office and they started work on Diablo 4. And that's just not how it works. And I've said this in a past video. This ain't Blizzard North. And uh, it hits home really hard for a lot of guys that used to play Blizzard, real Blizzard games. I'm talking about Blizzard. I'm talking about Blizzard North. It ain't like that anymore. And there's a lot of guys that they don't realize this is a business. It's not a couple of guys in their basement doing this for fun on the side. Uh, this, just like any other business, adheres to those basic fundamentals of business. You're going to have supply and demand. you got to have all this other stuff. You're not just going to let a team go and do whatever the hell they want to do. Because that costs a lot of money. You got to pay these people salaries. You got bean counters looking over all the money. You got people allocating, you know, people to go on these teams. You got project managers. All this. If you've worked a basic retail job, you understand how this works. You couldn't just clock in on the job and go do whatever the hell you wanted to do. And I know there's going to be some smart asses that come in the comments and say, "Well, I got to do whatever the hell I wanted to do." But majority of folks, when you go to the job, you don't just sit there and do whatever you want or take an initiative to go do. The boss man has something he needs from you, okay? Same goes for these developers. So, as you see, I've been going down a rabbit hole. I've been, ever since I kind of realized we can read all these, which is silly for me. I should have realized a long time ago we can read these investor reports. This is a hell of a lot better information to go off of other than hearsay or um, feelings and stuff like, yeah, you know, I'm a gut feeling kind of guy, but I also like to look at, you know, company documents and facts and stuff. And, and these really help kind of bring to light or shed light, shed a little evidence on thoughts that I have. So it might not be a hundred percent fact, but it still kind of backs up what, uh, what my gut feeling is on this. But uh, one thing I found really, really interesting. Okay, let's see. Let me put my glasses on so I can see here. Okay, so we've got 2018. This is 2018. The number of developers working on Call of Duty, Candy Crush, Overwatch, Warcraft, Hearthstone, and Diablo in aggregate will increase 20% over the course of 2019. Well, I'm not going to lie. I had to look up what aggregate means, and that basically means mixed. Okay, so that statement right there kind of reinforced some suspicions that I had about why this game had no soul. 
feels like a bunch of different people have been working on this all throughout the development of its life cycle. Which, by the way, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Here is the uh, third quarter 2019. It was uh, announced or revealed the content in the pipeline. Okay, same with Overwatch 2. You know, just based on this here, we can loosely assume that maybe around this time, maybe a little bit earlier, development started on Diablo 4. There is no way that they developed this game for 10 years, 8 years, 7 years, and this is the product that we have. There's no possible way. There's no way. No way. If, if it is true, which I don't believe it is, I'll need to see actual like internal documents, not just they said that there was this project called Project Hades. That's not active development. So you, so if we just kind of go off off the track here a little bit, you got to remember that 2014, they were doing Reaper of Souls Diablo 3. That game was number two PC bestseller, number four console bestseller. They were not spending money developing another game, another Diablo game in the background at this period of time. They just weren't doing it. It doesn't make sense. You're making money. You just released an expansion. You're going to continue to maintain that. And then if we fast forward to 2015, they released it in China. And it specifically says in the 2015, I actually went through all of these trying to find if they actually specifically said when they started development on Diablo 4. And, and this one right here is as close as I can find. But uh, in 2015, they took um, Diablo 3 over to China, and it sold like crazy. So that's another reason why I don't think they started developing this game until here the last three or four years. There's no way. So, again, back to the aggregate comment. If you have teams from all over the place, Contributing. If you have WoW guys, if you have Hearthstone guys, you have Diablo, you have this, you have that. No wonder the game is in the state that it's in now. You're literally looking at a game that wants to be an MMO when it grows up and have social features, but it's not mature enough to have a social feature yet because you don't have an in-game finder. But you've been given the toy set from Toys R Us, like the, the clan starter kit, where you can just have a, an invite function and a chat, and that's all. And then when you grow up a little bit in a couple of years, they'll unlock the full thing for you. Um, and the itemization is like introduction to Diablo if it was made in 1987. I mean, it's just, y'all, the game was massively rushed out to grab money for the Microsoft merger. You have to keep the stock prices up to have a healthy acquisition. And this deal has been in the makings for over a year. Now, there was a judge that held it up a year ago, so I'm sure it really goes back to two and a half, three years. Okay. So, again, if we pull back up in this stuff here, and we come over here, you see in 2019, it's quarter two. So, the last one I showed you was last quarter 2018. So, now they're, they're hiring. Okay. Now, right about this time is when they started having their sexual harassment issues and the breast milk deals and all of that, okay? So you have a mass exodus of employees in the middle of development of a game. It's not good. And the reason I say mass exodus, okay, let's take my glasses off so the glare is not bad, but I found this really kind of wild. Majority of the jobs on the Diablo team, so you see right well. See right here, we're on the Diablo team. But majority of these jobs are senior positions, senior producer, senior game producer, activities designer, even though this isn't uh, senior, senior encounter designer, monster and balance, live ops engineer, senior gameplay engineer, senior quest designer, senior gameplay engineer. If you wonder why, the game is soulless. Diablo 4 is soulless, and in the shape that it's in now, this is why. The game should have been delayed. Let's just be real. Everybody knows that. It should have been delayed. Senior game producer, senior level designer, senior concept artist, 
senior animation outsource supervisor. All of these positions, lead outsource supervisor, senior activities designer, senior activities designer. This is why we don't have an experienced person that knows that, hey, picking up a stone and moving it to the end of the dungeon is not fun. And that's why you have these poor developers having to get up and say, we know it's not fun. Yo, the, the game developers said the game wasn't fun. That tells you where we're at. The other problem with this, this is an analogy I like to use. I worked on cars for about 10 years for Chrysler. Anytime a vehicle came in on the hook, which is what we call bringing in on the tow truck, and the repair order said it's been at multiple shops and no one knows what's wrong with it, you treated that thing like it had the plague. You didn't want to go anywhere near the thing because you knew you were going to be married to it if you took on that job. Well, that's kind of what we got going on with this game. You've had so many people's hands in the pot. You saw the credits. If you played the campaign and you watched those credits, me and my buddy Ebian, we, we, you know, what was it? June 1st, we no life the beginning. I think we played 24 hours straight. Cleared the campaign, took 14 hours, and then we sat there and watched the credits. It was an astronomical amount of people. That tells you right there, the more people that you've got hands in the pot, the more ideas, the more personalities, the more agendas, the more whatever comes into the pot, the more diluted it gets and the more weird it starts tasting. And think about a big pot of chili. If you had a big chili cook off, but instead of everybody making their own special recipe, everybody made one big giant pot. Do you know how bad that would taste? All of these different flavors and all of these ideas and all of these secret ingredients and all this shit in this pot, it would taste horrible. And that's what we've got right now. But because of all this going on in the background, they keep pushing forward. It does not matter. So this other thing, uh, I, I had touched on this a long time ago when I was trying to predict when the game would actually come out. Uh, they've never postponed a Diablo game. It has always come out when they said it was going to come out. And uh, that's what we got. And that's why you saw that the uh, the betas weren't full betas. The betas were level 20, 25 cutoffs. And that was all you got. They didn't want to expose the rest of the stuff. They didn't want you to see that the game was not done. And another evidence of this uh, kind of a lot of different people having their hands in there, including a lot of different developers, is what I call spaghetti code. So think about a big mountain pile of spaghetti. When you go to pull one piece of that spaghetti out, well, you know, there's a bunch of other pieces that are going to be affected. And that's why we've seen some of the things we've seen when they implement a patch and then some unintended effects go on. Because they've had so many hands in the pot that it's hard for them to do anything. That's the real reason why we don't have stash tabs. That's the real reason why we don't have the memory leak fixed or resistances fixed or any of this fixed. They can't fix it. You understand? They've had too many hands in the pot. They can't fix it. The only way it's going to be fixed is on expansion. They're just going to completely rewrite the game, and they're going to charge us money for it again. And guess what? Majority of them, I say um, because I'm not falling for it again, but majority of the people that play these games, they're going to fall for it. And you know why? Because we've been conditioned because of nostalgia or hype or advertising or whatever the case may be to accept mediocrity. And I've talked about that in a previous video, but a lot of the comments against the negative negativity, sometimes just calling things like they are is considered negative. I mean, that's just, it is what it is. But a lot of the uh, counter comments from the copium people is you got 200 hours out of the game. Sounds like, Sounds like a good game to me. No, that's a shitty Diablo game. That tells on you right there that you hadn't played Diablo game very long. The core Diablo players, which let's be real, that's all that's going to be left. This game was marketed to casual dads. I, I hear that so much it drives me up the wall. The, the, the dads are going to play this. No, they're not. Their wife is going to get so sick of them playing that game. After two weeks, they're going to go right back to what they were doing. They're not going to be playing Diablo. The core Diablo players, the one that's going to keep this game going, play Diablo games for years. 
We're not talking about 300 hours. We're talking about 3,000, 5,000 years. There are guys that played Diablo 2 for 20 damn years. They'll run the same boss over and over and over and over again for 20 years. That's what they expect. They expect a game that delivers that. And I'm one of those. I expect that in a year, I should be able to sit down and turn this game on and get another six months of playtime out of it as it sucks me back in, just like every other game in the series, including Diablo 1. If you've never played Diablo 1, go play it. It'll suck you in too, because it's hard. Those games had a certain siren call. You know what a siren is? Like Ariana Grande? She gets up there and sings on that cliff and all the sailors are like, huh? and their boat plows into the side and it, it sinks. That's what Diablo is supposed to be. Every time you get on there, it's supposed to suck you back in. And Diablo 4 just does not do that. Why? Because it's not the same. And that I know everyone's seen that clip of that one developer with it going around. and He talked about just give up on Blizzard. Blizzard is dead. It is a corpse. Ooh. It is a corpse being puppeteered Ooh. Ooh. by Activision e. and uh, Bobby Kotick. And Bobby it's Kotick. going to be used as basically a factory mm -hmm. to put the Blizzard stamp on things and stoke nostalgia to get sales. And that's it. We expect to deliver strong financial performance for the full year, driven by successful invigoration of the Diablo franchise. They literally said right in their company files that they're resurrecting Diablo name to make money off of live service. We're literally being farmed like chickens. So my question is, if we hated Diablo Immortal for the predatory pay to win practices, why are we not calling this out? Because it, this is the same shit, it's just guys differently. You understand? We talked about the patch, you know, I did a video on that, the, the uh, patch killing the eternal realm to push everybody in there. And, you know, I, I look back on that video and I'm like, you dumbass, you left out one very key point there that you were trying to make. If you kill the eternal realm, but in the season, besides the battle pass and, and all of that, in the season, you offer something to make up for that loss of power, like malignant hearts or whatever else, which is what the developers came out and said, don't worry about the nerf over there in eternal realm. The, the, just go to seasons because the you know the malignant hearts make the builds really stupid powerful and all that so that was another point to that if, if you kill the eternal realm and you herd players into a certain area to be put in front of a way to get their money and then it further reinforces the point when they weren't even putting a confirm screen on the on the redeem your token they wanted everybody to redeem their tokens and get that shit out of there they didn't want you to save your token See, and then you go into the cosmetic. I'm not even going to put it up because we've been in the store. We know what it looks like. But all those cosmetics are expensive. There's no way to re-earn. Maybe I think somebody did the math and said three times. If you do, if you pay for three battle passes, then you can get another one for free or something like. Y'all, the predatory stuff's there. You just can't pay for power. It's still predatory stuff after we paid all this money and made them all this damn money. They won't fix the game. They'll make number adjustments that they're comfortable with doing. And so they won't have the game implode. Because you notice Rod always came out and said, well, we got to do it. You know, we got to manage expectations. You know, we got to do it this way. We got to do it that. What other developer do you hear say that ever? No, you, you don't. Yeah. So he came out and said, just basically, just suck it up. And then we heard another developer say, this is a foundation and we're going to build on it. So... Um, yeah, they're just going to farm us for money. And honestly, I'm sick of it. So I didn't, I, you know, I didn't, I still haven't logged in. The internet's been back up for a couple hours. I still haven't logged on. And the, you know, just a small thing is I wish we could play offline. They didn't give me that option. So I went and played seven days to die offline and, and had a blast. Fun game, even though it's old. But anyway, I just wanted to bring this to y'all's attention. These are some of the reasons why this game feels soulless. It To me, this game feels like a soulless predatory monetization grab. It, it, it's all it is. Every three months, they're going to farm us for money and, and cosmetics. 
and they're going to just do little teeny things in the game because they can't do major things because the game's in shambles as far as the code goes. And that's that. Gone are the days where we have something badass. Appreciate y'all. If you like my content, do me a favor, hit like and subscribe. If you have not joined my Discord, the link is in the description below for the House of Hog. We ain't mild, we wild, baby. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.